motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kanitra. Peace and welcome to today's episode. This is your hostess, Queen, and I hope that all is going well with you. In today's episode, we're going to talk about does meditation even work? I've received quite a few comments and questions around how to meditate does it work, so forth and so on. In this episode, we're going to primarily focus on the science behind meditation. In upcoming episodes, I will go through some various different types of meditation. In this episode, towards the end, I will give you a small taste of a meditation practice, which is simply just mindfulness, which is just getting you into a present state. So this is a quote that I have around meditation. Meditation allows me to enter the space of the eternal now, where all my so-called problems dissipate. That is a quote from yours truly. So before we get started, Let's get in the present moment. So we're going to take a deep breath together. Just one breath. One divine breath. We're going to breathe in through our nose. And we're going to breathe out through our nose. As we breathe in, we want to take a deep breath. So as we breathe in, our abdomen, stomach area is going to enlarge. We're going to bring that air all the way up to our chest. And we're going to count 8 to 10 seconds. So we'll hold it in 8 to 10 seconds, and then we'll exhale through our nose as we contract our stomach, 8 to 10 seconds. All right, you ready? Let's go. Ah, thank you for that. It always feels good to get into the present moment. All right, so... On um, fist.org, and all of the links that I go through in this episode, I will have in the show notes. When we think about meditation, meditation is simply a way to become still, to get in the present moment, to monitor your thoughts depends on the type of meditation that you're doing. Now, what actually are thoughts? We discussed this in some previous episodes. And thoughts is nothing more than light. It's energy. Everything in this universe, 99.99999% is light, is energy. There's only 0.00001% of everything in this dimension that's actually matter. Now, scientists discover how to turn light, i.e. your thoughts, into matter after an 80-year quest. Again, this is coming from fist.org. And when we take a look at the article here, Imperial College London physicists have discovered how to create matter from light, a feat thought impossible when the idea was first theorized 80 years ago. And just one day, over several cups of coffee in a tiny office in Imperial's Blackett Physics Laboratory, three physicists worked out a relatively simple way to physically prove a theory 
first devised by scientists Brayton and Wheeler in 1934. Brayton and Wheeler suggested that it should be possible to turn light into matter by smashing together only two particles of light, photons, to create an electron and a position, the simplest method of turning light into matter ever predicted. The calculation was found to be theoretical sound, but Bray and Wheeler said that they never expected anybody to physically demonstrate their prediction. It has never been observed in the laboratory, and past experiments to test it have required the addition of massive high-energy particles. The new research published in Nature Photonics shows for the first time how Bray and Wheeler's theory could be proven in practice. This photon-photon collider, which would convert light directly into matter using technology that is already available, would be a new type of high-energy physics experiment. This experiment would recreate a process that was important in the first 100 seconds of the universe and that is also seen in gamma-ray bursts which are the biggest explosions in the universe and one of the physicists' greatest unsolved mysteries. The scientists had been investigating unrelated problems in fusion energy when they realized what they were working on could be applied to the Bray Wheeler theory. The breakthrough was achieved in collaboration with the fellow theoretical physicists from the Mark Planck Institute of Nuclear Physics, who happened to be visiting Imperial. Demonstrating the Bray Wheeler theory would provide the final jigsaw piece of physics puzzle which describes the simplest ways in which light and matter interact. The six other pieces in that puzzle, including Dirac's 1930 theory on the annihilation of electrons and positrons and Einstein's 1905 theory on the photoelectric effect, are all associated with Nobel Prize winning research. Professor Steve Rose from the Department of Physics at Imperial College London said, Despite all physicists accepting the theory to be true, when Bray and Willer first proposed the theory, they said that they never expected it shown in the laboratory. Today, nearly 80 years later, we proved them wrong. What was so surprising to us was the discovery of how we can create matter directly from light using the technology that we have today in the UK. As we are theorists, we are now talking to others who can use our ideas to undertake this landmark experiment. <clears throat> the collider experiment that the scientists have proposed involves two key steps. First, the scientists would use an extremely powerful high-intensity laser to speed up electrons to just below the speed of light. Speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. That is the speed of light. That's me interjecting into the article. Back to the article. They would then fire these electrons into a slab of gold to create a beam of photons a billion times more energetic than visible light. The next stage of the experiment involves a tiny gold can called a Hallraum, German for empty room. Scientists would fire a high energy laser at the inner surface of this gold can to create a thermal radiation field, generating light similar to the light emitted by stars. They would, they would then direct the photon beam from the first stage of the experiment through the center of the can, causing the photons from the two sources to collide and form electrons and positrons. It would then be possible to detect the formation of the electrons and positrons when they exited the can. Land researcher Oliver Pike, who is currently completing his PhD in plasma physics, said although the theory is conceptually simple, it has been very difficult to verify experimentally. We were able to develop the idea for the collider very quickly, but the experimental design we propose can be carried out with relative ease and with existing technology. Within a few hours of looking for applications of Hall Rom's outside the tradi traditional role of fusion energy research, we were astonished to find that they provided the perfect conditions for creating a photon collider. The race to carry out and complete this experiment is on. So basically, uh, this article was written in 2014 and just proving the science behind light can be turned into matter. Light is turned into matter. Our thoughts are light energy. Our thoughts create things in this dimension. So now getting back to the meditation, but I wanted you to have a foundation to understand as you meditate, 
you have different forms of meditation that you may want to do. So again, the things that you're thinking, the way that you're feeling, they all come from your thoughts. So if they're giving you feelings of low vibration, then you want to change those thoughts because you want those thoughts to manifest into this third dimension. So what you've currently been manifesting obviously is not serving you or you wouldn't be listening to this type of information. So now let's go to the next thing I wanted to discuss in this article or in this episode. I alluded to uh, Dr. Dispenza. Um, he has a great body of work around meditation and neuroscience. There's three books that I have of his. Um, one that I'm currently rereading right now called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. He has one called Becoming Supernatural. And then the third one I have is You Are the Placebo. All three books, excellent, excellent excellent information with science to back it. Um, in rereading his book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, I was led to a blog post that he posted in 2019 titled, New Studies Continuously Point to the Efficacy of Meditation. This quote from Dr. Joe Dispenza says, imagine that meditation can make you have a younger brain. It can also cause your brain to grow new neurons, contrary to the antiquated theory that was once said this was impossible. If you remember, in the Reprogramming Your DNA episode, we talked about a science called epigenetics. This closely relates to epigenetics, meaning that you can change your genes, you can reprogram your DNA, and meditation is the best way to actually get into the internal software of your being and make those changes. Now there's a little bit here in the article or his post that I wanted to read and then we'll go to the scientific data. You never know what it will be that moves your life in a new direction. For example, it was a running injury that propelled Mass General and Harvard Medical School's neuroscientist Sarah Lazar to begin studying meditation. It all began after sustaining an injury while training for the Boston Marathon. Because of her injury, her physical therapist advised her to stretch more, so naturally she took up yoga. Lazar had heard all the claims about yoga and its benefits, but she was mostly in it for the physical therapy. It didn't take long, however, for her to notice that she felt calmer, more compassionate, patient, and open-hearted. Being a naturally curious student, Lazar began reading up on the scientific literature behind mindfulness and meditation, a category under which yoga often falls. What she found was a vast amount of evidence that pointed to the overall positive effects of meditation upon the body, including decreasing stress, depression, and anxiety, as well as reducing pain and insomnia. While increasing one's overall quality of life, this led her on her own neuroscience research. In her first study, she looked at people who had been meditating for seven to nine years and compared them to a control group. What she found was that those who had been practicing meditation for a long time had increased gray matter in their auditory and sensory cortex, in the insula and sensory regions of the brain, and several other areas. Increases in gray matter were also found in a region of the brain linked to the frontal cortex, which is associated with decision-making and memory. Perhaps the most striking aspect of the study was that while most people's cortexes shrink as they age, 50-year-old meditators in the study had the same amount of gray matter as those half their age. Imagine that meditation can make you have a younger brain. It can also cause your brain to grow new neurons, contrary to the antiquated theory that was once said this was impossible. So there we have it. Meditation is also anti-aging. So you don't have to go out and buy the anti-aging cream. You can just sit and be still and meditate and use your internal anti-aging. Now I wanted to go and uh, talk a little bit on her study. This is uh, Sarah Lazar, the new neuroscientist uh, from Harvard. And again, I will put the links in the show note for all of the different websites that I'm referencing. I won't read this entire study. It's a lot of scientific terminology. 
you can go through and read it. I will pick out some things that I want to cover. All right, abstract. Previous research indicates that long-term meditation practice is associated with altered resting electroencephalogram patterns, suggestive of long-lasting changes in brain activity. We hypothesize that meditation practice might also be associated with changes in the brain's physical structure. Mag magnetic resonance imaging was used to assess cortical thickness in 20 participants with extensive insight meditation experience, which involves focused attention to internal experiences. Brain regions associated with attention, interoception, and sensory processing were thicker in meditation participants than matched controls, including the prefrontal cortex and right anterior insula. Between group differences in prefrontal cortex cortical thickness were most pronounced in older participants, suggesting that meditation might offset age-related cortical thinning. Finally, the thickness of two regions correlated with meditation experience. These data provide the first structural evidence for experience-dependent cortical plasticity associated with meditation practice. Introduction. Meditation is a form of mental exercise that has become a popular U.S. health practice. Regular practice of meditation is reported to produce changes in mental state and resting. Electroencephalogram patterns that persist beyond the time period of active practice. We hypothesize that regular meditation practice should also result in significant changes in the cortical structure in regions that are routinely engaged during this mental exercise. To test this hypothesis, we use mag magnetic resonance imaging to visualize differences in the thickness of the cerebral cortex of experienced Buddhist insight meditation practitioners. This form of meditation does not utilize mantra or chanting. Rather, the main focus of insight meditation is the cultivation of attention and a mental capacity termed mindfulness, which is a specific non-judgmental awareness of present moment stimuli without cognitive elaboration. Formal practice involves sustained mindful attention to internal and external sensory stimuli. Thus, we tested the hypothesis that between group and experience dependent, differences in cortical thickness would be found in brain regions involved in attention and sensory processing, thereby showing evidence of cortical plasticity. Cortical plasticity, you can look at that as neuroplasticity, which means that you can change the neurons in your brain. They are not hardwired. Now, you can continue if you want more information from this research study. Um, it's fairly detailed. Those of you that are watching this episode via video, you see the picture here of the brain, the cortical regions, the thickness. If you're not watching this and you want to see this episode by video, if you go to thequeendome.com, Click on the YouTube picture and you will get to my YouTube channel and you'll just pull up this episode. Now, um, what I want to share with you is a small meditation practice and it's a mindfulness meditation practice. You don't have to be afraid that queen is trying to get you in some religious cult. Uh, this meditation has nothing to do with religion. It's simply just bringing yourself to the present moment, uh, bringing your breath into the present moment, bringing your thoughts into the present moment, and centering yourself into the present moment. There's no chanting or mantra that will do. But what I will do is I will guide you through this meditation. So this next part that we go into, if you're listening to this driving or doing anything, 
I encourage you to turn it off, come back to this when you can sit still, and then do the process. Another thing I encourage you to do is to take this recording, take the part where I start the meditation, and end the meditation. If you have a recording software, snip out these parts, and then re-render it, and then you have that recording by itself. Then what you can do is when you want to go into meditation, when you want to go into mindfulness, when you want to go into the present moment, you can just loop this, put your earbuds in, and loop the recording, and loop the recording, because I'm actually going to, uh, again, walk you through a guided meditation. Not sure if you all were aware, but I am a certified hypnotist. So this induction that I'm going to do is actually from um, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. So what I will do, for those of you that are going to uh, snip the recording out, I'll do a clap. So you'll see the spike in the audio file, so you'll know where to start. And I'll do a clap at the end, so you'll know where to end if you want to snip out the recording. All right, so let me just get to the page here where I want to do the induction. Again, if you're driving or anything like that, not recommended. You want to be still and you want to be centered. You can sit. You can lay in corpse pose. You can sit in lotus position. Just being still is enough. All right, so here we go with the clap. Now you can become aware of the space that your lips occupy in space. And can you sense the volume of space that your lips are in, in space? And now you can sense the space that your jaw occupies in space. Can you notice the volume of space that your entire jaw is in, in space? And now can you feel the space that your cheeks occupy in space and the density of space that your cheeks take up in space? And now notice that the space that your nose occupies in space. Can you sense the volume of space that your entire nose is in, in space? And now can you sense the space that your eyes occupy in space? And can you feel the volume of space that your eyes are in, in space? And now can you pay attention to the space that your entire forehead occupies in space, all the way to your temples? Can you sense the volume of space that your entire forehead is in? in space. And now can you notice the space that your entire face occupies in space? Can you sense the density of space that your entire face is in, in space? And now can you notice the space that your eyes occupy in space? Can you sense the volume of space that your ears are in? in space. And now can you feel the space that your entire head occupies in space? Can you sense the volume of space that your entire head is in, in space? And now can you notice the volume of space that the column of your neck occupies in space? And can you sense the density of space that your entire neck is in, in space? And now can you notice the space that your entire upper torso occupies in space? The density of space taken up by your chest. all the way to your back 
and shoulder blades to your shoulders. Can you sense the volume of space that your entire upper torso is in, in space? And now can you become conscious of the space that your entire upper limbs occupy in space? And the weight of space that your upper extremities are in, in space. Your shoulders, your arms, to your elbows and forearms. The density of your wrists and hands. Can you notice the weight of space that your entire limbs are in, in space? And now can you sense the volume of space that your entire lower torso occupies in space? Your abdomen, your flanks, to your ribs, all the way to your lower spine and back. Can you sense the volume of space that your entire lower torso is in, in space. And now can you feel the density of space that your entire lower extremities occupy in space, to your buttocks, to your groin, to your thighs, the density of space of your knees, the weight of your shins and your calves, can you notice the volume of space that your ankles and feet, down to your toes, your entire lower limbs occupy in the space? And now can you notice the space that your entire body occupies in space? Can you sense the density of space that your entire body is in, in space? And now can you sense the space around your body in space? And can you notice the volume of space that the space around your body takes up in space? And can you sense the space that the space is in, in space? And now can you sense the space that this entire room occupies in space? Can you sense the volume of space that this room takes up in all of space? And now can you sense the space that all of space takes up in space? And the volume of space that that space is in, in space. so that is called an induction and that will bring you to present awareness using your body as an example as I guide you through that so I hope you enjoyed the episode if you have questions or comments make sure that you look in the show notes so you can go to the blog link for this particular episode so that you may ask your pertinent questions or your comments. So peace and unconditional love to you and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website nobscloser.com. Again, that's nobscloser.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.